sorry for the pain that's in our heart Never thought we'd be this far apart There's a place out beyond Wrong and right, good and bad, black and white Hi and welcome back to Sailing Vessel MIG if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to make 1,000 before I sail away on my circumnavigation. These next few videos for the next few weeks are very special. They are my delivery of my friend's boat from uh, basically from Galveston, Texas to Punta Gorda, Florida across the Gulf of Mexico. The unique thing about this particular boat besides the fact that it is owned by my buddy Norman, is that Ebby May and Mig, we call them Christmas sisters. Ebby May is the same color as Mig, but she has red canvas and red stripe. And Mig has a green canvas and green stripe. So they're Christmas sisters. Uh, they are alike in so many ways. They both have electric yacht QT10 motors in them, which is significant. They have the same battery uh, configuration. However, MIG has lithium phosphate batteries and uh, Evie May has uh, AGMs. So there, that's a little bit of a difference. The other important thing is we have done our refits very similar. We've worked together and tried to do our refits kind of side by side, Norman and I. And so we have little things like the generator box at the back. Uh, this was an idea that I came up with and Norman implemented it and I got to try it out on this trip. Uh, there are other little things like Norman raised the cockpit combing uh, to keep the seas from flowing through the cockpit offshore and I thought that was pretty funny. It was not something I thought uh, I would do, but after being offshore on Evie May, that's one of the very first things I'm going to do on MIG is raise those cockpit combings because we definitely took some seas through the boat. So this video is a little different in that it's an intro to both the videos that are to come, the delivery videos of Evie May. And more importantly, at this moment, I thought it was the appropriate time to talk about the electric motor. So I just finished that video last week you saw of me installing my electric motor. And I obviously have not had the chance to test it out on MIG since MIG isn't even in the water yet. But on this delivery, I got to thoroughly test out the electric motor in offshore conditions and in real cruising conditions. So that was kind of cool. So I do have some information for you to share with you that is the truth about that electric motor setup. The other thing is, I've heard a lot of people say that they're a little concerned about how well a North Sea 27 would sail offshore. And to be honest with you, coming from a performance cruiser like Wandering Dolphin, it has been one of my concerns. I've been concerned that I would find that I was frustrated with her sailing abilities. And even to the point that maybe I wouldn't even be able to complete a circumnavigation in her, it did concern me. And I have the answers to those questions for you in this video as well. So let's first talk about the electric motor. The electric motor, as I've said from the beginning, I did not believe that it was the right choice for most cruisers. And I still thoroughly believe that. I think that especially if you are a new cruiser, if you're somebody that's just moving onto a boat and you want to learn the ropes, I don't think an electric motor is the way to go for you. It adds one more element of frustration uh, to the cruising world, in my opinion. 
um, it works out very well if you're if you're a true sailor if you like to sail and the problem is when you're learning to sail there are many times where you just simply don't have the skills available to you to get where you need to go without kicking on a motor and in that case the electric motor only has a very short range so let's talk about the range of the electric motor and this is real world usage the electric motor could push Ebby May at hull speed with his battery configuration for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. With MIG, I think that'll probably be closer to a half hour uh, because of the lithium phosphate batteries. Now, that would almost be no motor at all, just a motor to get into a harbor and out which is actually fine if that's what you want. Um, but there are times, and there were times on this delivery, that we needed to motor for a little while. So the nice thing is that is still an option with an electric motor and with a simple Honda generator. We mounted the Honda generator on the stern rail in a box, and yes, it does have a cover and yes, I've done this before on Wandering Dolphin. That's where our Honda generator lived for years. And yes, it can take the abuse and the salt air for about five years. And then you got to get a new one. But that's being used a lot too. So if you are willing to motor at 1,000 RPMs or less, and you turn on your generator, your Honda generator, you can actually continue to put in about 5 amps into your 48 volt system. And that is with the DC to DC charger charging up your 12 volt bank from your 48 volt bank. Norman had them linked in so that the only thing he ever had to charge was his 48 volt bank and the 12 volt bank would just automatically charge from the 48 volt bank. And this is a good way to go until you run into issues with uh, the DC to DC charger, which we did, but we sorted them out and figured out what we needed to do to keep that working. However, Norman did buy a standalone 12 volt charger to charge up his 12 volt system if he had to by itself. On MIG, I do have a DC to DC charger, but the way I've set her up, I have basically two separate systems. Um, my 48 volt system is standalone. It has its own solar panels and its own charger and I can choose to charge it up on its own. And then my 12 volt system is set up so it does not require the 48 volt system in order to continue to be charged. Uh, it has its own uh, charger uh, for shore power or the generator. It also has DC to DC capability, so we can dump the 48 volt bank into the 12 volt bank if we needed to. But I think with its own solar, my 12 volt system has its own solar as well. It has uh, 280 watts of solar just for the 12 volt system. It's also important for me to mention that Norman's solar system for his 48 volt bank was not even working for this entire voyage. We couldn't figure out what was going on, but it turned out that one of the panels, and they are in series, was actually not putting anything out. That meant his whole 48-volt system wasn't putting anything out. So once he figures out how much solar is putting in for the day, that's going to really make a big difference as to how much range he has with that uh, electric motor. And definitely for me, it'll mean the same exact thing. However, that being said, with the Honda generator going, we were able to keep Evy May going at about two and a half to three knots uh, indefinitely, as long as we had a little bit of gasoline. Uh, and we did find that uh, a gallon of gas lasted almost five hours uh, with motoring like that. We were able to motor on one tank from the de from the Honda generator for about five hours, four and a half to five hours. And that included 
cool down times of about a half hour every hour or so we would turn off the generator let it cool down and we would just motor continue to motor at a thousand rpms and then we would kick it back on uh, and and that maintained uh, the battery bank at wherever you started it with uh, if it was at 80 percent when you started motoring with the generator going uh, it may drop down to 76 but by the time you were done it'd be back up to 80 percent so that worked really well and I anticipate with the lithium phosphate batteries on MIG that I will even have a better uh, range with my generator. My generator is also not a Honda. It's a Champion and the reason I did that is it will run off of propane. I have two 20 gallon or yeah 20 pound uh, propane tanks aft and one of them will be set up for cooking and one will be set up for my generator. Um, I will also carry some gasoline for the generator as well but that gives me a little extra range with the propane on my generator. So I think that I'll probably do a little better with the lithium batteries but I will keep you appraised of that. As far as the power required for the motor um, it worked really well in any situation where we needed to motor out of a bad situation. There was one night where the wind was blowing uh, 30 plus and we were anchored and we needed to reset our anchor. And we will discuss that on, in a video to come that whole night and what happened. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, the motor had no trouble motoring against that kind of wind and pulling up the uh, anchor with his 48 volt Maxwell windlass. That is one thing that I don't have on MIG. Evie May has that 48 volt Maxwell windlass and in that situation it pulled that anchor up no problem. In my situation I would have to motor forward which shouldn't be a problem and I would have to use my manual windlass to pull up the anchor. And I do think that that would be possible uh, as long as you're able to motor up and take the strain off of the chain as you're bringing it up but it definitely would not go as slick as his electric windlass. So that is something that I may consider in the future. So enough with the electric motor. Obviously it's a go for us and it may be a go for some of you folks that are you know ready for that. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the Norsey 27, her sailing capabilities. As I say this, as I voice over this, I'm grinning ear to ear because she sails beautifully. I'm telling you, I was surprised. And I'm coming from a boat that is a performance cruiser. Um, Wandering Dolphin had waterline on her, had uh, depth, had shape, everything that, that this little Norsey 27 does not have. Wandering Dolphin had it. And I'm not saying that the North Sea 27 can perform as well to windward or in any way as Wandering Dolphin. But what I am saying is I was not disappointed. And that's a big thing to say. I was smiling. These little boats love to sail. They are just an absolute joy to sail. One thing that is to note is, well, a couple of things. The first thing to note is that this is a small boat with an eight foot beam and she heals over almost immediately. Uh, now Norman did have Evie May overloaded. She was quite heavy. So heavy May. So uh, I think that if you keep them lighter, which I intend to do, I think that that heal will be a little better. But they will heal over immediately uh, because that that narrow beam. and. It, just to t discuss beam a little bit and comfort ratios, if you have a wider beam boat, it tends to be more comfortable. Uh, like a West Sail 32 compared to the North Sea 27 is a very beamy offshore boat. Now here's where you get a little bit of uh, uh, technical stuff. Uh, if you have a narrow beam, you have better secondary stability. If you have a wide beam, 
you have better initial stability. So that means in a in a heavy wind, like say say it blows 20 knots, and you're on a nor on your on a west sail 32 with a wide beam, she will not heel over the same as a North Sea 27 in that same wind. The North Sea 27 will heel considerably more. However, there comes a point where in a big gust or if you get knocked by a wave that the boat goes over, a North Sea 27 is more likely to be knocked down. That means mast to the water, but not knocked over all the way. Uh, that's where initial stability and secondary stability come into play. Whereas a west sail, once it goes to a certain point, uh, because of its wide beam, that wide beam then begins to work against you and causes the boat to continue on over all the way. And then it'll come back up. I'm not saying that it wouldn't roll back up. But you're more likely, with a wider beam boat, you're more likely to actually suffer a complete knock over rather than just a knock down. So that's just a factor of boat design. So you give up a little bit of comfort in a narrower boat and of course in a North Sea 27 we chose a North Sea 27 all of us that have mostly because she has an eight foot beam so she can go on a trailer without any kind of special wide load permits and that is the requirement. So let's discuss that <clears throat> comfort level on a North Sea 27. It definitely heals over more. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the things that I have already built for MIG uh, since I've been home is a cockpit lee board. Uh, that's a board that goes across the upper side. It can be moved from the low side to the upper side of the cockpit so that you basically can sit on the high side uh, without sliding off of the upper seat. Uh, I'm going to put a cockpit cushion along the side of it and uh, it can also be stored below when it's not needed in the cockpit but definitely in my opinion that will make the cockpit more tenable uh, in an offshore situation. So yeah, the, the, you, if you don't like to heel over you're probably not going to sail a North Sea 27 offshore. Uh, let's just put it that way. Uh, she definitely heals. The other thing is, you must have a robust reefing system. You need to be able to triple reef your main for sure. Uh, in the way that the, the way I like to think about it after this voyage is, in 15 knots of wind, if you're used to a bigger boat, you just consider 15 knots of wind, 20 knots of wind. If you're in 20 knots of wind, you consider that basically the equivalent of 30 knots of wind. And if you keep those things in mind and you reef the sails accordingly, she handles big seas perfectly fine. She she did not, she shrugged everything off. I was in some big stuff uh, that one night, which we'll, we'll get to that video in the future. And I'll tell you what, the boat was fine. She had no problem with any of it. I have no problem now uh, knowing that I'm going to sail this boat around the world, including around uh, the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. Uh, I know she can handle it. The only negative that I have to give the sailing abilities of a North Sea 27 is the same thing that everybody else has always said, which is she does not track at all. Uh, my wife asked me about it and I said it's like she has ADHD. She just can't concentrate on one thing for more than a second. If you take your hand off the tiller and you want to go down and go to the bathroom, you may as well heave to because the boat's going to just heave to for you or head off in a variety of different directions. She just will not track. That being said, she definitely is very responsive to the helm. So it's easy to tack through the wind. Uh, I haven't had any trouble with any of, of the maneuverability issues on the boat. And, thank goodness, the autopilot worked amazing. No problem steering her. And the monitor wind vane also just was a champ. It worked wonderfully. 
Uh, so, and in a future video, we'll discuss sailing Evie May under all three of Norman's different configurations of autopilots. So I think that's enough for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed the sailing footage, and I really enjoyed the trip, and I'm looking forward to bringing you uh, the videos that I've, I've got planned for this trip. <laughs> I have a lot of footage, so I'm going to basically go through the whole trip with you and share it with you from beginning to end. I'm really looking forward to getting offshore on MIG. However, because of this month that I spent sailing in the Gulf of Mexico, I'm now a month behind. And as you know, you can't sail in the southern uh, part of the world in hurricane season down there, which is November uh, through April. So I've got to reevaluate where I'm going to be this summer. But MIG is going in the water in April, uh, first week of April, and we will be sailing her around here in the San Juan Islands and maybe up to Canada to Desolation Sound. And I'll, of course, be bringing you all of those videos. And then this fall, if I don't sail alone to Hawaii, my lovely daughter will be going with me to Hawaii. Hey, my son Caleb is even talking about maybe sailing around the world, so I'm hoping uh, something like that will happen. Doesn't sound like my buddy John is going to be able to go, at least not for the whole thing. So that's okay, though. Uh, the way things are working, I'm not going to have any trouble finding crew, I don't think. If you haven't subscribed, I've, I've noticed that the vast majority of people that watch these videos have not actually subscribed to my channel. And I really would appreciate it if you would subscribe. I'm getting better at making these videos. It's going to take me time to become very professional. But I think uh, my skills are in, they're getting better. So let me know what I can do to improve it. I'm happy to take criticism and uh, to try to, to you know make better videos. Also, I'd like to give us really quick shout out to Chip. This GoPro footage comes from my buddy Chip who sent me these GoPros. He sent me a couple of his old GoPros that he used on uh, moto cross uh, trips and uh, they worked really well and his little mounts, uh, you see those mounts right there, Chip, those were yours. Thanks a lot. They worked really great. And once I figure out how to use those GoPros to their full potential, I think we're going to have some really good videos. All right, come back next Friday, and we'll have some more of uh, Sailing Vessel MIG on her Christmas sister, Evie May, across the Gulf of Mexico. Thanks a lot. Like, together.